Hello, I'm. Yeah, just bear with me a second. What an episode that was. A. This is gonna be my review of. The self titled episode Rift Alia, uh, Rising of the Shield Hero, episode 15. So, the episode starts off. with. My first impressions, obviously, a just gonna put my glasses on so I can read this. Uh, right. First impressions is it's a look back at Raft Helios past where he. Boom a second. We were introduced to our childhood friend, Rafina, although when she says it, it sounds like Raflana. Um, it was another demi-human like Raftalia, a light brown blonde hair raccoon girl with the same big round eyes, Karen eyes like rafts but different way like a yellow tinge in them i can't say enough to you um you'll need to ready yourself for this episode as it's a roller coaster uh, of emotions involving rafina and raftalia um, yeah, it involves them heavily, and this uh, boy that they hang out with, um, a male demi-human, I think a male raccoon with bluish hair. Um, so the episode kind of goes along, goes along, and it's their past, the three of them, and them growing up and everything. Uh, And obviously, kind of like halfway through, like they're trying to build up the village again uh, after something had happened. I think it was to do with the wave that they seen, uh, the first wave, because uh, obviously you heard about it. And obviously, this episode was kind of like looping back to how Raftalia ended up in the slave owner's care. Well, I don't say care. Um, and obviously, Melomark's soldiers are painted in a such a fantastic light in this episode. Like, um, when it surprised me if they were from the Three Heroes Church. Uh, I'm really starting to dislike the the church and like the royals. Well. The corrupt royals in this, in this story, for obvious reasons. Because, I mean, look at Raf Talia, doing there in the picture that I've put in this video, just right there to, the right right underneath me. That was when a near the end of the episode, where she's talking to Rafina, she unfortunately doesn't survive, because they go down to the. Well, before that, she, they, there was a flashback that Raftalia had of her mum and her dad, and her dad telling her to smile no matter how hard it is. Which is very good advice, but like in some kind of situations, it doesn't always work. I... So, I mean, they go down the... Raftalia goes down the... Darkness engulfed stairs, and that's where she's like, she finds all the like, damn human kids that are still alive. Because it's like Melty and Philo, they find them, um, and obviously she has flashbacks to how she tried to feed 
Rafina to help her survive. Um, but as I said, it wasn't to be because they go back and uh, she's seen if everyone's still there. And from what it looks like, she remembers where Rafina's cell is. And uh, yes, she unfortunately doesn't make it. And to be quite honest, that's the part of the episode that will hit you like a brick wall. It's just the feels that they do in this episode, which is fantastic. Uh, fantastically written. I mean, Raftalia takes it upon herself to, when she's dealing with Idol, to... She was going to run the sword through him, like Ichigo had done to him by Rukia back in the beginning of Bleach, but she didn't, because she said something along the lines of, if I do that, if I do this to you, I'm no better than the worm that you are. Of course, that obviously is like, you filthy demi-human. And I'm like, oh my god, seriously. It gets up just as Raftalia turned around and walked back to Nafumi because Nafumi brings her out, brings, he brings her out of her rage to stop her from killing him. Um. And also she's walking back to Master Nafumi. And uh, he gets up, the idle guy, and he runs towards, well he doesn't run towards Draftalia. He grabs a, a blade and swings at Draftalia. But she's quick enough to turn around and catch the end of his sword with the end of her sword. Um... He no idol knocks the sword out of her hand, and she's like kind of whoa, whoa, kind of like that, like she's about to fall over. But as she's falling over, she brings out that magic sword, you know, the one that the the shop owner gave the group before they left the adopted king's citadel. <laughs> um, and she just sticks that right through him. It's like dosh right through. Like self defence obviously. Um But then he's so taken aback by that the idol stumbles as he stumbled him backwards. Oh That's uh, Sean by the way. He's a fellow anime nerd like me. He's not seen um any of Ride and Shield Hero yet, so if you're watching this, Sean, you've appeared in the video, so yeah, I hope that's alright. Um, anyway, as Ida was tumbling back, um, after having the magic sword stuck through him, he slips on the the top part of the whip that he used to whip Raftalia as you do and he deliberately or accidentally or accidentally deliberately falls through the top window um, and his love was a big smash where the, the windy breaks and he falls out onto the ground and I'm like right and then the guards are like what what's happened there so what you see is Nafumi standing there in the window so that they see him. And it turns in when it gets back to where they're standing. And obviously what they're do what he's done for Raftalia is he has pushed her out of the way so that they don't see her, they see him. Because I'm thinking that he's taking it on board, that he'll take the blame for it so that Raftalia doesn't have to. 
And the thing is completely oblivious to how much she does for Raftalia every single episode and how much he cares for her. And obviously she's got feelings for him, obviously, obviously because of the stuff he's doing for her. Um, but I think he knows in his own wee way that she does like him like that. And she's, and he's like, just, I'm here for you, by doing that thing for her. Um, I mean, as I've said about the wee mini flashback that she had to her mum and dad, and um, she said, mum and dad look out, um, watch over me, because it shows them talking to her, and the dad saying to her, I'll be smile, no matter how hard life gets. Well, I think that's what he said, but in his own wee way. And um, as I says, She's at their grave, kind of praying and that, and obviously that scene leads on to the, the one where the soldiers come in and like kidnap the lot of them and take them into custody and ever kind of everything like that. But I mean, long story short, it was a very good episode, very, very, very good episode, well written. Um, my favorite part of the episode is when he, the boy, raccoon fella thing says to Raftalia, you've not failed Rafina. You've technically brought the shield hero to her. I think he was basically trying to kind of like be spare her feelings. Make, obviously letting her know that Rafina is still there with them I mean, in their hearts and their minds. Which is a good thing because I'm finding that a lot of anime these days is kind of dealing with death and who's who's left behind when people pass on. But it's got a very good message though when in this episode that near the end obviously in this picture here down there. Um, that's her, Raftalia talking to Rafina because somehow she sees her because her spirit comes back to talk to her. Um, when they say their goodbyes and like they'll meet again and everything, you know, like your standard stuff. Um, but my favourite part of the episode is Nafume the stepping up and looking out for his party. He healed the he healed everyone that could be healed, saved them humans like Raftalia knows that the shield hero would do. Um, and basically there was a moment where Nafumi remembers what Raftalia did for him when he was feeling down and completely useless because she was doubting herself she was doubting herself that she wasn't worthy enough to walk beside Nafumi but he's like he put his hand on her shoulder and to say da -da 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 -da, and did for her what he did he did for her what she did for him, bringing him back up, bringing her back up basically, um, and that was quite nice what he did, and it's getting on all nice and they're walking out of the, the, the prison bit underneath the castle, moat thing, whatever it was, and then there's Idol and he's not dead, he's just sitting in front of this statue with the, the pendant with the three heroes, George, saying some mumbo jumbo, can't remember what it is, you can tell, I don't really care about that character. Um, and the, the lord of this region, that they're in the minute, says, oh no, he's doing this thing. These big huge circles come around him, because he's releasing a seal on this monster. And he's like, yes, yes, arise, arise. And he goes, if I can kill the shit devil of the shield, I will be completely made. Da -da. And I, at first, when it comes out the ground, I think it's a dragon. And I'm like, God, blow my hell. He summoned a dragon. But he's actually summoned a T-Rex-like thing. Like a dinosaur thing. 
and as the dinosaurs getting up, it goes boom, and it completely squashes a idol underneath its foot, and I'm like, damn, you should have stepped out of the way when you summoned that thing, because it will squash anything it sees. And I'm like, yeah, they summoned, killed them, well, flattened them. But I mean, like I say, with like stupid little underlings like that, you'll probably be back. But anyway, yeah, up into an episode, funny bit at the very end when he got squashed when he summoned that dinosaur. Um, and now the part I've got to deal with that. Yeah. So I mean, obviously the next episode, there's someone new that they're introducing. Uh, she looks alright, and I don't know if she uses magic or not. So, yeah, uh, anyway, hope you enjoy this review, and um, Sean, just there, if you see this video, your message just popped up right in the middle of the video, um, yeah, so, catch you all later, for the next episode, next week.